Hey, everyone. Welcome to Locked on Lakers for Tuesday. Brian Kamenetsky, Andy Kamenetsky. That might have been the gut punchiest of gut punches that I've seen in a long time in the NBA. The Lakers lose game two, and it's going to be tough to bounce back. We'll talk about it next. You are Locked on Lakers, your daily Los Angeles Lakers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. That, Andy, was brutal. (laughs) And so we still thank everybody for making Locked On Lakers your first listen of every day. Monday through Friday, no matter how sad you are, uh, (laughs) this podcast will never be locked behind a paywall. Locked On Lakers on YouTube It's where over 23,000 people are more. I don't have the heart to put it behind a paywall tonight. <laughs> that just feels cruel. Like you, not, like you put the wall out. Like, I'm, not, I'm not charging people to listen to our misery tonight. Just leave it out. It's fine. <laughs> oh, man. That was, I mean, just a brutal game. Uh, the Lakers in game two, they lose uh, 101 to 99 is the final and it looked, it felt like that scene in, in uh, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom where that guy just reaches into the person's chest and pulls out their still beating heart. Um, that was the Lakers and Lakers fans tonight. Do want to let everybody know that today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. I have a competitive side and it's a uh, big fan of Monopoly Go, the mobile hit twist classic. <laughs> Sometimes these reads just don't fit very well. <laughs> <laughs> the mobile hit uh, twist classic on Monopoly. So join your friends and download Monopoly Go now for free on the App Store or Google Play. Um, all right. That what makes this Andy just so horrible, and Lakers fans obviously know this is this game was not a back and forth where the Lakers just came up short. It was a game where they were up 20 in the second half, 20 points. And everybody knew Denver had a push in them. But, I mean, good God, you're up by 20. You have to figure out a way to win the game. I don't care if you win by one. You have to win the game. They were up 20. And I I actually tweeted out at Cam Brothers during this game back when the Lakers really did seem in control of this game, not dismissing Denver, not thinking that they are put away because they are far too talented and and dangerous and well-oiled a machine to ever just write them off, even down 20. But one of the things that was encouraging to me in thinking that the Lakers were going to actually get this split heading back to L.A. was just seeing them open the second half running actual offense Mm -hmm. and looking like they were determined to do all of the things that put them up 15 at the half. They jump out to, I want to say, a 9-4 run pretty quickly in – in that third quarter, open the, they opened the third with an AD and one. You're like, okay, here we right. go. It, it it felt like okay, this is just a night where they are rolling, and then before you know it, the offense just completely collapses. They go like five six minutes without scoring, and you know they. Denver goes on a 14-5 run to get the lead down to 10 by the end of the third quarter. There was a frustrating, weird sequence where D'Angelo Russell, who had a terrific bounce back game, and we'll talk about him later. Like he was he had seven threes in this game. He started out, I believe, five of five from behind right. the arc. Like, if nothing else, D'Angelo Russell showed that he's not fearful or completely I don't want to say snake bitten because who knows how the rest of the series is going to go on but at the very least Denver's not in his head you know afterwards he said these were the same shots that I missed in game one but they were the exact same there's quality some, shots there's a lot of truth to that we, actually yeah, he wasn't even we making both, that up yeah it's what we both said after game one these are makeable shots for him but D'Lo drives inside and he gets hit in the face after the release like 
like right after uh, for, by Michael Porter Jr. for an and one. And the Denver challenges the foul and it gets upheld. And I'm not even looking to bring this up like as a way of arguing the play. I'm just saying something like that that frankly was just weird. <laughs> like when when Denver challenged it, I my initial thought was for what? Like what what's being challenged here? He clearly got hit in the face. That even I didn't even recognize it in the moment because it felt more weird than ominous, but that was in retrospect a sign of like okay, bleep is just going to start going wrong for the Lakers in a lot of different ways. Yeah, and you know we'll get into a lot of different things today. You know, tomorrow uh, into the weekend. You know, game three coming up on Thursday uh, back in LA. Um, it was one of those things that crystallized. You know, if we're talking about mistakes, and it, geez, it's hard to know where to start in this game because you know Anthony Davis on the one hand, it was just one of these things, Andy. To me, you you watch it, and it's like. It was a it was a perfect encapsulation to me of why Denver keeps winning these games. It's you know the Lakers, you know Anthony Davis was unconscious unconscious in the first half. He was incredibly good, eleven of twelve from the floor, twenty four points. D'Angelo Russell, six of seven from three point range. But if you look at the rest of the roster, it wasn't like everybody was, you know, just off, you know, you know, off the charts amazing. Rui was invisible. Austin Reeves did not have a particularly strong first half, two of eight. LeBron was, you know, moving the ball well, seven assists, you know, very solid, but he wasn't piling up points. He only had, uh, took six field goals in the first half, 10 points. You're like, okay, AD is not going to shoot 11 of 12 for the rest of the game. D'Angelo Russell is going to miss more than one three pointer, but like, they're doing stuff like the the offense is moving there and other guys are going to be better. LeBron's going to be better in the second half. It felt sustainable. And, you know, as well as Anthony Davis played and, you know, the Jamal Murray game winner over him at the end, that's a guy making a shot, you know, and all that. But AD in the second half and in the fourth quarter, particularly he had one shot. You know, you got one shot and no points from Anthony Davis in the fourth quarter. We can start talking about why at some point, but no points from Anthony Davis. Um, Russell was excellent in the first half. He went terrible in the second, but he definitely lost some of that rhythm. You know, Reeves bounced back with a couple big um, buckets. He hit a three and, you know, he had a, 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 a important jumper down the stretch, but had a horrible turnover, um, you know, in, in crunch. Just... Little mistakes, missed free throws. Um, the Lakers missed two of three free throws in the in the fourth quarter. Little mistakes after little mistakes, and the one you talk about there, Denver gets a play overturned where D'Angelo Russell got whacked in the face, and I saw enough Twitter Twitter commentary where people were saying like the ball was so far out of his hands that it wasn't considered part of the play. That wasn't the part they were reviewing. It wasn't the wrong call. Whatever. Darwin, though, doesn't challenge with 50-something seconds left when LeBron looked. I, I thought it was a foul in real time. I thought LeBron got a hand on, on Murray's hip as Murray was driving um, and ended up with an and one. Darwin, in a game where twice Denver had calls overturned because the call the, the contact was called marginal, Darwin doesn't challenge that play. And I and I I I understand saving timeouts. You need them in a tight game or whatever. But you know what? You also kind of need to have a team that is tired. And calling a challenge there is like an extra break for your guys. You might get the ball back in. So like overall, I don't in a game by the way where I mean this was this speaks to what makes Darwin deciding not to do that feel even more inexplicable. I think Darwin was actually very conscious of guys being tired in particular lebron yeah and i actually thought made some good decisions in the fourth quarter trying to compensate for a, a fatigue factor for lebron like lebron started he went back to the normal rotations for lebron and ad meaning anthony davis plays the entire first and third lebron starts the second and the fourth like he typically does switched it up in game one mixed results but 
LeBron started the fourth quarter looking gassed immediately. And after a couple minutes, Darvin took LeBron out, put AD in about halfway through the fourth quarter. There was another timeout that I think was called specifically to get LeBron rest. LeBron responded with an and one jumper. Like those are good decisions by Darvin. But as we've talked about in a series against a team like Denver that's this damn good, everybody has to up their game and every single mistake matters. And pointed commentary from Anthony Davis that I'm sure we'll spend a little bit of time on in this show and certainly uh, tomorrow and into Thursday's game. Uh, we'll get to all of it next. Locked on Lakers is brought to you by Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. With over 3 million members, the easiest, most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports is just you against the numbers. You pick more than or less than on two or more player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Get in on the playoff action. Win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a new level during basketball's upcoming postseason you can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks you can turn ten dollars into a thousand dollars with basketball and hockey entries today on prize picks america's number one fantasy sports app they offer apple pay for quick and easy deposits into your account during this basketball postseason and simple to play you can make your picks, submit an entry in less than 60 seconds. Go to pricepicks.com slash locked on NBA. Use the code locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. Price picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. You know, so you look at this, Andy, and, you know, it's obviously just, it would be hard to design a game where the loss would be more devastating than this one. And the Lakers walked on the floor and been blown out by 40. I actually think it would have been easier for them to come back for game three than absorbing what they did in this one. Um, I hope not, but I, I understand why you yeah, say that. I, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't, I, but I'm not so wild. If I'm wrong, I'm not wrong by much because, you know, you, again, you go up by 20, but like, the, look, the Lakers lost this game offensively. Again, look, I, I know Denver down the stretch, they made, they scored on seven of their eight final possessions. And the Lakers actually managed to get some buckets late. They, they scored on five of their final eight possessions, I believe. But overall, they scored 40 points in the second half. They held Denver to 101 points and they had a 20 point lead. You ought to be able to score enough to hold on to that lead. And I think to some degree, you know, when you talk about because we we mentioned this the other day, like is one of the adjustments that Darwin might do is to go with a better defensive guards, likely Gabe Vincent over D'Angelo if they're trying to protect a lead. Yeah. And you wondered if that not, was something he did. I not, not necessarily even for it. I was gonna right. say not necessarily endorsing it, just but just my, wondering my if it's something he would do. Well, and also, too, I mean, the, this came up in a discussion with – because people were talking about benching D'Angelo Russell after game one, which we both said was a total overreaction and would be silly of Darvin to do. But w one of the things that we did talk about was if this was something that Darvin would do, most likely with Gabe Vincent, which is the way it played out in this game, even if he's in there as a defensive substitute and a defensive play – there still needs to be some offense generated right. from him or Spencer or whoever is in there that isn't D'Lo because and that Denver's and that by the way is why that's why I didn't love the concept. And again, I'm not saying you were endorsing it. I'm just saying I wasn't endorsing it <laughs> I, this <laughs> at is, all. This is what I didn't like about it. And look, Russell played 39 minutes in this game, but. You know, again, going back to Darwin, getting him in back into the game too late. And D'Lo, you know, who was, again, much shakier in the second half than he was in the first. I understand all these things. He also responded with a what appeared at the time to be a critical and clutch drive and, and, and layup that, you know, put the Lakers up by a bucket. He needed to be in there for 41 and a half. You know, it's like it's it's not that 39 is too little. He didn't bench him for for. It's just these little plays on the margins where the Lakers, as individual players, 
and as a coaching staff do not operate at the same level of efficiency um, and execution as the Nuggets do. And a lot of that is, you know, fully anticipatable, but it's also the reality. The Lakers have to elevate. Rui Hachimura was bad. Again, second straight game where Rui has been a total non-factor. You know, in the bench, Dinwiddie and Vincent, regardless of which guy should have been playing more or less or whatever, between the two of them played 25 minutes, took three shots, scored no points. Yeah, Can't have it. Here's the other... Here's the other reason, too, that I think D'Angelo – I mean, you and I were texting about this, and I, I said I thought he yep. was making – Get him back in the game. He did. And among the – men, you know, beyond the fact that the Lakers clearly needed to get their offense going, and even if D'Lo wasn't as effective in the second half, he's still one of the more likely candidates to get your offense going between a clutch shot or his playmaking, the pick and roll that he can run – with AD, with LeBron, you know, in general, I think they started going away from more set offense as the second half went along. Certainly near the end of that third quarter, it completely fell apart. The other reason that I think D'Lo should have been in there is, as you mentioned, Rui was a complete non-factor. But among the four starters who weren't non-factors, AD, LeBron, Reeves, D'Lo, D'Lo was the only one of the four that didn't look tired down the stretch. Like LeBron, really, I mean, it's two games in a row. LeBron has looked tired down the stretch. I don't know if AD was tired or not, but he was, if nothing else, becoming less effective. I don't think he was getting the ball enough. And also worth noting, D'Lo is one of the guys on this team most conscious of getting Anthony Davis the ball. Reeves definitely looked tired, and I don't blame him. He spent a lot of the game chasing Jamal Murray around and actually pretty effective for a lot of the game. Murray, 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 for all of the damage he did in the second half and the fourth quarter, was still only Murray nine was of three of four. Six, he was three of 16 before eventually going six of eight and hitting just that killer shot over Anthony Davis. And it cannot be stressed enough. Jamal Murray is a goddamn murderer on the basketball court. He just is. That playoff guy Jamal is. Murray. I know we make the playoff blank jokes a lot. Playoff Jamal Murray is a real thing. Oh yes, it is. I mean, that is a very, very yes, real thing. It is. But D'Lo was the only four of those guys who, if nothing else, did not look tired, whose energy did not seem to flag at any point in this game. And the idea of just looking to protect a lead again, it gets to. I think part of what hurts Darwin and can lead to overthinking, because we've talked about this, Darwin is an overthinker as a coach, is I think he coaches to anticipate issues and try to cut them off as opposed to dictate the terms and create the issues for the other team. I think it's a habit of Darwin's. I I, I agree with you in, in that regard. I think this is one of these things where I've said a lot throughout the year that Darwin has been given a very challenging hand. Um, he, if you want to compare it to like college, he's doing like post grad work. He's just failing the courses, um, and so you know, I, I think it, it's interesting if you look at the you know, Lakers social media through these games. <laughs> Happy place. <laughs> <laughs> don't recommend it if you're you know <laughs> prone to depression. We, we we have to go there it's part of our livelihood part of our job but it's so like you put on a hazmat suit and you just, you just go but mm-hmm. it's not like you don't see 85 percent of the people all pointing to why isn't this happening except for that opportunity to review down the street like when it comes to like rotation why is it why aren't we going bigger why aren't this guy like you see 400 different people saying 370 different things. And to me, that gets to, you know, you know, maybe we all get a little out over our skis with the Rob Palenka GM of the year talk because, and the look, the injuries hurt, but like it's hard for the Lakers to go big right now because they only have one other big who isn't Anthony Davis on the roster and he is limited. He picked up two fouls in six minutes, Jackson Hayes, and he works hard, but you know, this isn't the series for Jackson Hayes. I mean, I, 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 
I understand. I think you can make an argument for issue. playing. I think you can make an argument for playing Jackson Hayes more. Two reasons. First of all, he could help them from getting killed on the glass. Like yep. that is one area where Hayes can help. And also the other the other guys who aren't scoring, like other than Torian, they're getting quite literally no, no literally nothing. Off the literally like, nothing. Yeah, literally gets overused, but in this case, it is literally. If Hayes isn't going to be scoring either, at least he provides a certain utility sure. that can prevent I, waste not, getting hurt. My point, my point isn't that you can't construct an argument for him. My, but it's not like, remember last year, Andy, when we were all being like, like you know, okay, why isn't Rui Hachimura playing? Like, was that like, we were just like the, it, the Memphis series where I was screaming, just put Wenyan in for either Beasley or Brown or both in the second unit so they can stop getting killed on the glass. And the minute Darwin right. decided to do that, the series was over. point I'm making here is it's not – it is a Dar – they have a Darwin problem, and Anthony Davis will get to his comments either – he basically – he didn't basically say. He said in the post game that they have long stretches on both sides of the floor where they don't know what they're doing. Um, that is very pointed commentary from your star – um, after game two of the playoffs. Um, so, you know, and, and, and a 100% a shot at the coaching staff. Um, you know, James Worthy basically came as close to saying they need to swap these guys out as you can get on the home network of the team. Like, you know, so he was very critical of what he was seeing on the floor. And, I I I don't mean this in any way to try. They have to fire Darvin Ham. I don't care if they win a title this year. They have to fire Darvin. They also have a roster problem. You know, reinforcements might be on the way, but uh, it, it probably is too late at this point. Um, we'll we'll give you the health update on Christian Wood and Jared Vanderbilt, um, and continue to vent about what happened on Monday. Uh, we'll do all that next. Locked on Lakers is brought to you by BetterHelp. We all need the opportunity to get things <laughs> on our chest, big or small. Certain things can really start to get to you, and it's important to let it out, be able to speak with someone who's unbiased in your life. You know, and look, these outlets can come in different places. We try with this show, tonight's not the greatest night of an example, but to provide an escape from real life. I love the Lakers. You love the Lakers. We want this to be a stress release, but even on a night like tonight, it doesn't change the fact there are more pressing issues for people's real lives. And it's important to be able to speak with somebody when those things really pile up. I know for me, it was huge during a difficult period for my family, speaking with a professional, in go undergoing therapy and it can be different for everybody and if you are thinking of starting therapy give better help a try it's entirely online designed to be flexible suited for your schedule visit betterhelp.com slash locked on nba to get 10 percent off your first month that's betterhelp h-e-l-p.com slash locked on nba Locked on Lakers also brought to you by Monopoly Go. Um, I have a competitive side. Andy has a competitive side. We're competitive people. We compete with other people on the network to have the best darned podcast that Locked On can offer. I think we win. Um, but you know what? Monopoly Go also satisfies our competitive side. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist on Monopoly where you play not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities, and that all the stuff that brings you big money. Best part is messing with friends. I can charge my friends on my iconic properties, just like Classic Monopoly, but I can also heist their bank vaults of riches for myself, dive into them like Scrooge McDuck, and the leaderboards show me who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. So it's not just my competitive side that loves it. It's actually a fun way to hang out virtually with friends, people all around the world in time tournaments. You earn huge rewards. So get the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or Google Play. I I I am not one Andy to complain about officiating, um, especially you know again you lose a twenty point lead, uh, but I'm I'm watching this D'Lo play, 
And like intellectually, I understand, like, I guess what the explanation is. Cause if you do watch it, the ball is well out, it's many feet out of his hand. That's never how it's called. Play. That's what made right. it so freaking that's, weird. That's what I don't know. It's like, okay, the letter of the law stuff, somebody can pull it out of the rule book where this is, why this isn't a foul, but he got hit in the face. That's like, always called a foul. He got hit in the face. That is, I don't understand why this isn't a call. No, I don't get it either. And again, making it clear, the refs are not the reason the Lakers lost this game. They lost this game because they blew a 20 point lead. But that, that and one that D and one opportunity that D Lo lost directly led to a Denver bucket. So, in that sense, it really was a killer. It's just like, you know, you look at these plays and it's, it, it, it uh, the guys get hit in the face. It, it seems, like, but it's been a bad year for the Lakers being hit in the face without calls. Um, and so, like, I understand the frustration there. I understand LeBron's frustration after the game, talking about officiating. I understand D'Lo, um, you know, essentially tweeting out twenty five thousand dollars or whatever it is the NBA is going to fine him for criticizing the officiating. Um, like, you know, you're rich when <laughs> it just doesn't bother you, and you're willing to do it. But I mean, I, ultimately, it's just it a side note. I just I'm watching that play again, and I don't get it. I, yeah. I, it it's sort of emblematic of you know. It's, the, it's why I brought the, it up in the beginning. It wasn't to complain about it because there's that sequence. Like I said, it was costly, but it's not what cost them the game. It just, in retrospect, felt very ominous that a play that inexplicable. And that weird and that like really what what the hell is going on would come back to bite them before we get to, you know, Vando and Wood. And I, I wanted to touch on one thing that you said uh, before before the last break about the idea of Darwin being dealt a difficult hand at times or over the course of the season. Certainly having to coach against Denver is a difficult hand for any coach in yes. the league because Denver's really good, and Nikola Jokic, I will say this over and over, is the most matchup-proof player in the league. He went like multiple quarters without hitting a basket in this game and still ended up finishing with 27 points on 16 field goal attempts, 7 of 7 at the line, 20 rebounds, 4 on the offensive glass, 10 assists, 2 steals, and just 3 turnovers. The guy is just quite literally unstoppable. That being said, though, what I find frustrating in a lot of ways, indefensible with Darwin, it's not the idea that this is an easier job on a game-by-game -game basis than he makes it out to be all the time. It's just the stuff that should not be that difficult of a decision he makes harder than it needs to be. So I don't think of this as a college level class, you know, like the advanced level college level class. I think of this as a normal level class that at times it feels like he snuck he, like I don't want to say snuck into college because I don't think that's fair to Darwin because Darwin put in the work as an assistant, but it just feels no, I, like I know what you get that. I, but that said, you regardless of kind of whatever metaphor you want to use. They can't do this again. And when Anthony Davis is talking about how we don't know what we're doing on both sides of the ball after this kind of gut punch loss, like the, you can't, you can't go through. We made the joke, sort of joke, that you know the upside to the Lakers getting blown out of this series in you know four or five games, whatever it might be. For Lakers fans, is that surely this would be the thing that that prompts the Lakers to fire Darwin, and whether they do or don't remains to be seen. There is a lot of uh, pull, I think, in terms of the Lakers and you know Rob Palinka not wanting Genie likes Darwin. Uh, Rob has they, they're churning through coaches. They owe him money. Um, Rob, this one will be on Rob. Um, you know, if it, and, if it and they've been a revolving out. door, right? At, That's at, right. exactly. It's going to make it difficult. It's going to make it difficult for them to get. A great hire when you're always going to be feeling like am I, am I just going to get blown out in two years am I going to be a scapegoat do they do they even know what they're looking for in a coach right and the answer may be I don't I don't I don't think they do but and it, you and I both it, liked Darvin as a hire for what it's worth yes I'm, you know we both and, did. I, and I thought last year he had a pretty decent rookie season 
It was funny. So like the, the, the athletic um, had a, you know, their, their player survey or whatever. And a couple people on, I saw on Twitter made a big deal out of the fact that 24 different coaches appeared on who somebody voted for them for, I would want to play for them. And Darwin wasn't one of the 24. And I pointed out that it actually, it, it, I'm not surprised by that because it's the second year. And so, you know, somebody like Taylor Jenkins, who's young in his career, you know, wasn't super high on that list either. And has shown a, you know, a lot of success with a young team and all that kind of stuff. Um, I just don't think he's Darwin's been around long enough for a lot of guys to be like, I want to play for that because you can't vote for your own players, like your own coach. He no, did that's though. That's not a problem here. Right. No, he did. <laughs> probably true. Uh he did, however, appear on the coach you don't want to play for list which is also not somewhere you want to be after two years because it means the reputation, at least among players who haven't played for him or have and no longer play for him, is not very strong. And um, my, I just it's disappointing because Darwin has, by all rights, seems like a, a wonderful person. That's not none of this. But like he's gotten worse this year. Yes. Uh, he is regressed. a worse coach this season than he was last season and that after being both, handed even with the injuries a far better hand than the one he started with correct last year. and he, i think ironically last year's disaster hand masked his own inadequacies as a coach and this i mean we'll get into we'll get into the uh, Jared Vanderbilt, Christian Wood of it all uh, for Wednesday, and both of them. Thursday. Both of them are Wood is expected, I think, to be able to play, which will help. And Vanderbilt is hopeful he'll be able to play. Right. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll get we'll into have, the implications. Yeah. Much and, more, and there are implications. I mean, those, there those guys can help in some problem areas at the very least. But my last thought with Darvin is what makes this what makes this untenable in a lot of ways is these guys have not quit on Darwin. Like, that's obvious. They they are – it's not a question of they won't play for him or they're sandbagging him or anything like – even during the periods where it felt like they were clearly tuning him out and would have been perfectly happy for him to get fired, they were still playing, I think, overall in a way that didn't indicate we are trying to – we're trying to get our coach canned. But it's very clear they don't want – to play for him. Yeah. I that's agree. really obvious. Right. They don't I agree. Want, I, I, they not, will, but they don't want not to. quitting on Darwin. We're not playing for Darwin either. No. Um, and you know, the, the, that's not good. Uh, <laughs> anyway, we'll get back into the analysis. A a, a just horrible loss. Yeah, and on, on and look, day. just so it's clear, because the conversation ended up going here in ways that you and I weren't necessarily planning on heading into the show. Th Darwin is not the sole reason they lost this game, but no. It, but there's a lot that came out that made Darwin part of the conversation. Just so it's, are, the the reasons they lost this game are sort of galaxy reasons that are tied to why they're in this position. Yes, exactly. The entire season. I and, just wanted to clarify you know, that. Yeah, so it's all meta stuff and. Yeah, you know, we but we you know, we talked about like what you know who didn't show up and the players like the players own responsibility for a lot of these things and you know AD needs you know, as good as he was one shot uh, we mentioned these things one shot down the stretch LeBron you know yeah uh, he was was phenomenal late and you know I, I got actually done a lot of criticisms of LeBron in this one but you know Russell wasn't as good in the second half as he was in the first Reeves needed to be better the bench needed to be like this is a player thing too. But, you know, I, I don't want it. To, the biggest thing, I don't want it to seem like we're turning the page on the season. It isn't over yet. But no, um, it does feel um, like this one was costly. Uh, anyway, we'll get back into uh, getting ready for game three, looking at what the Lakers might do differently, what did go right for them. Uh, Locked on Lakers on YouTube is where you can go hang out with over 23,000 subscribers, leave questions, leave comments. Uh, we will have a couple days to use them on the show as we prepare for game three. See everyone tomorrow.